More than a thousand years ago, a small community of Native Americans lived right here on the western banks of the DuPage River in what is today Winfield, Illinois. They lived by harvesting nuts and berries from nearby the village, hunting waterfowl and wild game in the marshes and the forest, and lived their life from generation to generation. And when they passed on, they honored and buried their dead in a triad of effigy mounds less than 100 yards to the west of here in the direction of the setting sun. For more than 900 years, these mounds remained undisturbed, either by Native American peoples or by the early European settlers. But by the 1920s, multiple attempts had been made by local vandals to plunder the mounds for their meager physical remains. Between the 1930s and the 1970s, multiple digs by both amateur and professional archaeologists left these mounds in an almost totally unrecognizable state. They went from being sacred ground to being deeply scarred ground. Then in the late 1980s, Doug Cullen, an archaeologist from the University of Chicago, brought this site to the attention of the broader archaeological community by documenting and describing the village site and the mounds for the very first time. And then he raised the awareness of the site to the general public by conducting a series of tours throughout the 1990s. By 1999, Mr. Cullen and the DuPage County Forest District rebuilt and restored the mounds to something akin to their former solemn state. I'm Joyce. And I'm Brian. And in this series of videos, we'll examine the last remaining Native American burial mounds in DuPage County, Illinois, the Winfield Mounds. We'll look at how they came to be. We'll examine the findings of the early investigations. We'll look at how they came to be dismantled and destroyed, and then how they were ultimately restored. But most importantly, we'll look at what they have to teach us about these earliest of Americans. We'll see you there. The sources for this video series include the excavation of DU-1, a mound of the Player Mound Group, DuPage County, Illinois, an unpublished report written by University of Chicago archaeologist George K. Newman. The excavations at DU-33, a preliminary report, an unpublished report of the Wheaton College investigations led by Dr. James E. Jennings and authored by Kenneth G. Hogland regarding the Native American settlement site close by Winfield Mounds. The Archaeology of Winfield Mounds and Village, DuPage County, Illinois, published in the periodical The Wisconsin Archaeologist, Volume 70, Number 3, and authored by archaeologist Doug Cullen, then a Ph.D. student at the University of Chicago. Middle to late woodland occupation of upland settings in northeastern Illinois, an example from the Couch site, a paper by Peter J. Geraci of the University of Wisconsin at Milwaukee. Aerial photographs from 1939 of DuPage County from the state of Illinois. Aerial photographs and LIDAR imaging from 1956 through 2018 from DuPage County, Illinois. DuPage County Forest Preserve information from www.dupageforest.org various census records, vital records, and grave records for the people associated with the story. And finally, various period newspaper reports. The Winfield Mounds are located in the Winfield Mounds Forest Preserve in a locale bounded by Winfield Road to the east, Geneva Road to the north, High Lake Road to the south, and Indian Knoll Road to the west. The Metra Union Pacific West Railway line runs close by the site, a little more than a half mile to the south. The Geneva Spur of the Chicago, Aurora, and Elgin Railway also once ran east-west a little more than 1,000 feet north of the site for about 30 years in the early part of the 20th century. Housing subdivisions flanked the site to the east and west, while Winfield's town center and the Northwestern Medicine Central DuPage Hospital dominate to the south. To the north are natural areas, part of the Timber Ridge Forest Preserve and the Klein Creek Farm Living History Museum. Within the Winfield Mounds Forest Preserve, the actual Winfield Mounds and associated village site are located on a gently rising bluff on the west banks of the meandering west branch of the DuPage River 
nestled between two low marshy areas to the north and south, in woodlands of oak and hickory, forests which have likely stood for centuries or even millennia. If you visit the site by automobile, there is parking available along the west shoulder of Winfield Road, near the park entrance to the northeast. There is also parking available less than a half mile south of Geneva Road on the east side of Winfield Road in a parking lot shared by the Winfield Historical Society and Oakwood Park. If you're visiting by bicycle or on foot, you can enter the Winfield Mounds Forest Preserve via the Geneva Spur of the Illinois Prairie Path. Near the Winfield Mounds Forest Preserve entrance, along Winfield Road, and just south of Geneva Road, there are at least a few paths to the Winfield Mounds related sites. From the north or the south, you can walk or cycle one of two natural pathways to the west of Winfield Road, before the pathways merge and channel you across a footbridge over the west branch of the DuPage River. The footbridge affords a scenic view of the west branch of the DuPage River, especially looking downstream or southwards. Anglers often fish the river along the banks by the bridge, and it's also a favorite spot for hikers and photographers. Signs positioned at the bridge warn that motorized vehicles, whether gasoline or electric, are not allowed in the forest preserve or on the Illinois Prairie Path. The west branch of the DuPage River is at most times a small to modest sized river and mild in disposition. But seasonal rains and flooding can sometimes turn the river into a dangerous hazard when it can breach its modern channels and return to adjacent floodplains along its river valley. People have lost their lives along this pathway due to the river, so be very cautious when water levels are high. The DuPage River and the surrounding county take their name from an early settler, a French trader who lived along the river several miles to the south. By the way, the correct and original pronunciation of his name was DuPage, rather than the Americanized version, DuPage, that we use today. At least we get it half right. Once across the river, you'll walk about a quarter of a mile in a generally southwestern direction along an asphalt and gravel pathway, flanked by a wooded marshy lowland to the east and a wooded ridge to the west. Like most of the DuPage County Forest Preserves, the Winfield Mounds Preserve is home to a variety of birds, mammals, fish, amphibians, and reptiles. It's not uncommon to see herons, egret, rails, and coots in the marshes. Red-tailed hawks, falcons, and even eagles can sometimes be seen circling high above, while skunks, possums, raccoons, white-tailed deer, and coyotes roam the forest below. The pathway follows the contours of the land, and so descends gently down from the bridge, but then rises back up to be several feet above the bridge elevation, until you nearly arrive at the pathway junction with the Illinois Prairie Path, where the path descends again. The Illinois Prairie Path was the former trackway of the Geneva Spur of the Chicago Aurora and Elgin Railway, which closed down by 1939 and runs directly east-west here. And this is the path you can take if you're coming in from the west along the Illinois Prairie Path. At this junction of the two pathways, the DuPage County Forest Preserve has placed a sign describing the pathway to the east that takes you into the mound site area. The sign indicates that cyclists should walk their bikes towards the mounds, both as a sign of respect for the ancient mound site, as well as being less harsh on the natural pathway that will lead to the site. Decades ago, this portion of the forest preserve and the mound site itself 
were subjected to unlawful dirt biking and off-road motorcycle traffic, tearing up vegetation and disturbing what remained of the Winfield Mounds and Village site. The sign also indicates that visitors should stay close to the path and to not vandalize or disturb the sites in any way. This gravel and shaded pathway takes us due east for another 400 feet, where the gravel path ends and where two natural earthen pathways commence. Given the quiet solitude of this pathway today, it may be difficult to imagine that Chicago, Aurora, and Elgin trains once barreled along here at more than 40 miles per hour. Taking the dirt path straight ahead continues on due east and will lead to the remains of the Chicago, Aurora, and Elgin Railway Bridge that once spanned the west branch of the DuPage River, but which was torn down 80 years ago. We took you on that pathway on our previous series on the ca &E Railway. If you'd like to see where that pathway goes, then check out the ca &E Geneva Spur video from our channel page. The natural earthen path to the right leads to the mound and village sites. As you take this right-hand pathway, you first descend to a lower wooded area, but only for a few hundred feet, before you emerge along a small ridge flanked by lower marshy areas to the east and west. Here you'll be walking in an open meadow with fields arrayed in goldenrod, which yield a stunning golden yellow mantle when they bloom in September. Native Americans would use goldenrod plants for their edible seeds, as well as for medicinal purposes. This part of the pathway is perhaps 400 feet in length, and at this point the pathway begins to slowly rise up along a modest bluff to the west of the river. To your left, you'll notice that the pathway has brought you near to a bend in the DuPage River, with cattails and rushes sweeping its banks. The incline of the riverbank becomes steeper as the ground rises up here. To your right, you'll notice an open forest of oak and shagbark hickory trees, which is something akin to the forest of hundreds or even thousands of years ago, before invasive species such as buckthorn obscured the forest floor. At your feet, you'll observe that the hickory trees carpet the ground all along here with a rich harvest of hickory nuts, which Native Americans would utilize for food, for oil, and for medicine. Hickory trees were also favored for making bows, snowshoes, and other essentials of life. The oak trees here, primarily white oak and bur oak, also serve the Native American, the bark of which could be used for tanning hides, the seeds or acorns could be used for making soups and breads, and twigs could be used for making baskets. Ancient oak trees were often considered sacred by some Native Americans, and you can see some fine examples of such trees in this forest. Walking along this ridge, you begin to get a real sense of what attracted Native Americans to the site. Fresh water in the nearby river, game in the marshes and forests, and a rich array of natural resources, all easily accessible if you know how to harvest and use them. After traveling along this forest bluff for about 400 or 500 feet, you'll observe that the earthen pathway forks, with one path heading off to the left and southwards along the riverbank bluff and the other heading off in a westerly direction. If you take the path to the left, within a short distance you'll be walking along a Native American settlement area, which archeologists uncovered more than 40 years ago, just along the bluff, and likely extending west for tens of feet and southward for a few hundred feet.
There are no markers or signs to guide you here, but the general bluff area along the pathway was likely populated by a modest-sized Native American settlement, and at different times, more than a millennium in the past. Taking the pathway which forks westward will take us to the mound site, just a short distance from the village site, as we continue to walk along the margins of a stand of oak and hickory trees to the north. Notice that as we walk west of the river and the bluff, the land dips down before rising up again as we approach the mound area, which is a little more than 100 yards from the river. Reaching the mound site area, we can see that the DuPage Forest Preserve District has erected an interpretive sign to the four of the three mounds. This sign was erected 20 years ago, when the mounds were restored. We'll talk more about that in coming episodes. These earthworks are effigy mounds, so-called by archaeologists, as they are often in the shape of a geometric form or a stylized animal. The Winfield Mounds consist of three effigy mounds, all conical or round in shape, about 30 feet in diameter, one to two feet in height, and arranged in a triangle, each mound being about 80 to 100 feet from the others. Standing at the interpretive sign, the easternmost mound is the nearest and to the viewer's left. This mound is the most pronounced and is also perhaps the most visible of the three. The southernmost mound is directly in front of the viewer and slightly to the viewer's right, or southwest, and is about 100 feet in the distance. The third mound is usually the most difficult to see, and it's about 80 feet to the right of and a few tens of feet forward of the sign, west by southwest. Depending upon the time of year, all three mounds may be difficult to see, as during the summer months especially, the mounds are mostly obscured by weeds and underbrush. The best time to view the mound is in late autumn, the winter months, or early spring, when most vegetation has died back. An earthen pathway extends between the easternmost mound and the southernmost mound, enabling visitors to get a much closer look at these mounds. Another pathway extends from the interpretive sign to the west, to the right of the sign, enabling visitors to get a better view of the westernmost mound. As you might guess, these mounds, as well as the village site, actually have more official designations given to them by the archaeologists who first investigated these sites. And we'll talk more about that in the coming videos. This mound site 
and the nearby settlement site are important because they represent the last remaining documented Native American mounds in DuPage County, Illinois. Archaeologists concur that there were likely dozens or even hundreds of such mounds in this area of northeastern Illinois before the arrival of the Europeans. But agriculture, industry, and housing wiped them off from the map during the first few centuries of European settlement. In the next episode of this series, we'll take you back to 100 years ago, when this area was mostly farmland and rural in setting, and when these mounds first came to the attention of amateur and professional archaeologists, and what they found when they first investigated this prehistoric and sacred place. <laughs>